we've come to number 77, No Attachment to Dust. This is not so much a story as a teacher's advice to his students. And we're going to look at it line by line because it doesn't really have a whole container to it. Shingetsu, a Chinese teacher of the Tang Dynasty, wrote the following advice for his pupils. Living in the world, yet not forming attachments to the dust of the world, is the way of a true Zen student. So we're always living in the world. There is no, you can't step out of the universe, you can't step out of your world. And as we're living in the universe, and as we are encountering many things, many situations, many feelings, many thoughts, many words, it is incumbent upon us, it's imperative that we be responsive, that if someone comes our way, we respond to it. And that response is best when the mind is free and clear. So a free, clear mind will respond to circumstances more appropriately, more skillfully than a mind that is burdened with cloudy thoughts of should and ought, with cloudy thoughts of past and future. So the dust of the world that this line talks about is all of those cloudy thoughts, all the clinging, all of the holding on, all the grasping that we have held on to from previous encounters that obscure the clarity of our mind right now. So this first line, living in the world and not forming attachments, being responsive, being connected, not forming attachments to the dust of the world, to all those beliefs that we have is the true way of a Zen practitioner. Second line, when witnessing the good action of another, encourage yourself to follow their example. Hearing of the mistaken action of another, advise yourself not to emulate it. We learn from one another constantly. As children, modeling is one of the most skillful parental uh, behaviors, or at least having a behavior that is worth emulating is one of the signs of a good parent. So all of us are at one level ignorant. We don't know. We don't know what the effect of our actions might be. We don't know when all of the culmination of our past actions might happen. In a way, it's a mystery. So when we're looking at the world and we see something exemplary, something that leads to harmony, something that leads to wholeness, something that leads to to supporting other people, something that leads to a brightness of mind, something that leads to clarity of mind, we should take note. And the meta, the, the four foundations of mindfulness include sympathetic joy. So when we find someone who is living with joy, equanimity, clarity, to be in harmony with them is practice. Likewise, when the contrary happens, to recognize someone is doing something unskillful, and no matter how it looks to the surface mind, don't follow it. So if we're very carefully looking at the world and just seeing what seems to be most helpful or least helpful, and then we are working in that, depending upon the level of our understanding, things will go well. That's number two. Number three, and we'll do the rest after, after this. Number three, poverty is your treasure. Never exchange it for an easy life. So what is that referring to? It could be referring to poverty of mind. That is, that there's just not a lot going on, so the mind is clear and fresh and bright and responsive. It could recur, it could refer to a poverty of resources. If we have little of something, we pay a lot more attention to it. If we are <clears throat> have only so much food in the kitchen, 
we pay a lot more attention to what we're eating, pay a lot more attention to how we're paying it, how we're pre preparing food. So this kind of emptiness, this kind of reduction, there's a, a reduction of stuff, reduction of thinking, and an increased awareness that is commensurate with it. So the poverty we're talking about is not the bone crushing poverty of economic disparity, but rather it is the poverty that, con that brings liveliness, that brings attention, that brings sacredness to our actions. So basically for us modern people, I think it really engenders a frugal state of mind where nothing is wasted. Everything has a place in the universe.